Okay, let me show you something interesting. This is the upcoming Nord 4. It will launch in India soon for 30 to 35,000. And the Antutu score is 14,79,000. Again, Moto H50 Pro, same price. However, see the Antutu score is nearly half. But wait, picture abhi baki hai, mere dost. This is Poco X6 Pro, 25,000. Much lesser than these two, but see Antutu scores is 13 lakh. What? Like if I graph it out here, a 25,000 score is here and a 30,000 score is here and another 30,000 score is here. Like, huh? Is processor still the most important thing while you buy a smartphone in 2024 or are there other factors to consider? Or simply put, how to buy a perfect smartphone in 2024? The answer? This video. Like we have tried about 100 plus smartphones now in the service center of each phone company and this is the only video you need to watch to buy a perfect smartphone in 2024. Welcome to another episode of TW Explains and we'll talk from our practical experience, not just by reading spec sheets. If you read spec sheet, subscribe so we don't have to. Let's start with the first thing that you notice after unboxing, the design. Now this is one area I would say it has seen big improvements in the budget segment. Phones like this Realme 12X or even this Redmi 12, they cost around 10,000 rupees and they all have similar stuff build wise. Plastic body, plastic frame, headphone jack and hybrid SIM card slot meaning two SIM card or one SIM plus one micro SD card. Good thing is the phones look very nice. I mean see this Realme 12X, it looks like a premium phone. Now the higher you go in price, the build starts to get better and better. At 20,000 like this Lava or Infinix, you get curved display. I'll come to display specs in just a moment but this curviness in the phones make it easy to hold and fun to watch videos in and overall it feels premium going up to around 25 to 30,000 this is where you start to see extra features being added on phones like the nothing phone 2a gives you a unique glyph light or take this moto h50 pro for instance it has vegan leather finish so grippy to hold plus you also get a metal frame quick question do you know which was the first phone to have a vegan leather finish like let us know in the comment section. Now, if I move up the price, like OnePlus 12R or even this S23 Ultra, only two features are added in build quality. One is glass back and second is better glass protection or IP rating. Other than this, the design of the phones may change from brand to brand, but the functional features of the build remain the same. Now, it's your choice. How important is build quality to you? For me, 25 to 30,000 is my sweet spot for design because at the end of the day, we all will just buy a case. Now, for a lot of us, our phones are primary source of watching movies or the IPL. So display is one aspect that is very important to me because no matter what you do with the phone, you'll be always looking at it, right? And in that aspect, I would say there are a few things I would always recommend. Like number one, try to get an AMOLED screen. I know this is common knowledge by now, but let me demonstrate. This phone has LCD and this one has AMOLED. If I turn off the lights, see the blacks on the LCD look gray, whereas it is completely black on the AMOLED. So watching movies on an AMOLED display is always good. Plus you also get always on display. So that's a uh, Bonus. Number two, ensure that the display is full HD+. In normal language, it means 1080p. Now I know, like the higher you go, like on this expensive Vivo X100 Pro, you get support for 2K or even 4K displays in smartphone, but honestly, I've used all of these in real life. Hands down, 1080p is absolutely good. The amount of money you have to pay for that 2K and 4K display is not worth it in my opinion. And number three would be refresh rate. Here, have a look side by side in slow motion. This is running 60Hz and this is on 120Hz. See, the 120Hz look so smooth. So scrolling and all of that feels more fluid. Let any fluid company tell you anything, but it should be 90 or 120Hz. And most phones are about 20,000, Motorola, IQ, nothing, Realme, Samsung, all of them have these three features. Now, if you go higher like this OnePlus 12, you get something called LTPO display. So see here, if I'm scrolling the display, it is in 120Hz, but when I'm not doing anything, the display comes back at 1Hz. This is variable refresh rate and it saves battery life. It is a good to have feature. Now to explain camera, let's take three smartphones at three different price segments. At 11,000, we have the Realme 11X and at around 30-35,000 we have the upcoming Nord 4 and then we have the flagship S24. During the daytime you'll see all the three phones take decent photos. Yes, the Realme 12X is average but it is not bad. The photos are possible. However, if you lower the lights, this is where the money kicks in. Like clearly the Nord 4 and the S24 have better picture quality than the Realme 12X which is completely understandable. In fact, the higher you go in price, the better camera features that you get. As I see, there are a few things to know about when picking a phone for camera. Firstly, megapixel isn't everything. We have done a dedicated video on that. We have tested 12 to 200 megapixel phones. If you want, you can go check that video out after watching this one. Also, if you are into selfie videos, making reels and all, ensure the phone does 4K selfie video. And finally, 
its common knowledge depth camera and 2 megapixel macro camera is useless rather having an ultra wide angle lens or even a telephoto lens is better as a ground rule under 20 25000 you get one good main camera rest everything is below average under 30000 you start seeing good main camera as well as good ultra wide angle lens or telephoto lens and then for good videos you'll have to spend somewhere at least 40 to 50000 see frankly speaking this camera segment is so huge that we can do a full dedicated video on it let us know in the comment section if you want a detailed video on that. Now, performance is a very interesting story here. Let me go one by one. At around 10,000, phones usually have a CPU that gets the job done. This Redmi 12, for example, regular stuff like phone call, watching videos, casual subway surfer and all is fine. But if you push it, playing BGMI or even photo editing, it will struggle. At around 20 to 25,000, you will get good performance, but with a bargain. Like take this Poco X6 Pro, for instance. For the price, the performance is off the charts. Like in our testing, you could play Genshin Impact very smoothly. Plus this phone is tuned mainly for performance. So you also get extra features like frame interpolation and all of that. However, all of this comes at a cost of mediocre camera. So see here, all the photo that we took, the skin tone is very off. Around the 30-35 price point, you have two choices. On one hand, you can go all in on a performance-centric phone like this Nord 4. See, and those scores are almost like a flagship phone. But then you will not get extra features. Or you have phones like the Moto H50 Pro. Performance is decent and you get a lot of extra features. IP rating, wireless charging, excellent software. So in this range, you at least have an option. More performance or more features? choice is yours. Beyond this, that is above 40,000, pick any phone and chances are you will have a very good performance. That's because phone either have A, a flagship chip or B, last year's flagship chip. And both of these are more than enough to play mobile games like BGMI, Genshin Impact or even do video editing. Now coming to software, here price doesn't matter. I would say there are two major sentiments we all look for. First is the Android version, come years of update. As of 2024, all new phones, budget or expensive should come with Android 14 right out of the box. But when it comes to update, Story is different. See, this is Samsung A52s. This launched in 2021 with Android 11. Samsung promised three years of software update and see it is currently running on Android 14. So from our experience, brands like Samsung, Google, OnePlus and all, they do deliver on their update promise. That being said, other brands like Motorola or Xiaomi, while they do promise the update, but they give it very late. See this Moto S30, it is still running on Android 13, that is one year old. And the second thing is, when it comes to software, is bloatware. Now I'll make it simple and straight for you. If you want a clean ad-free software experience, go for phones like Nothing, Motorola, OnePlus and of course Google. That is top tier. Then you have other brands like Samsung. They don't give you ads, but you do get a few first party software, some notifications and all of that. And then you have phones from Redmi, Realme, Vivo, IQ. You get tons of third party bloatware. See this Vivo X100 Pro. This is a flagship phone and even this has ads. So I'll make things simple for you regarding software with this tier. And last, the biggest point, service center experience. So last year we did this video on smartphone service center experience. We also did a green line issue on OnePlus service center. Now service center experience is highly dependent on the area you live in. But here's how we would rate service center experience of brands in tiers based on our experience throughout the year. Other than these, there are a few common things which I should mention. Almost all new phones in 2024, about 12,000 will be 5G. And most phones should easily last you one day of use on battery. Few exceptions are there with compact phones or flip phones. And yeah, that was our take on what you should look out for when buying a smartphone. We kept this video simple and practical for you guys. Like we have used all the phones that we mentioned in the list. Videos for them are up on the channel. Tell us in the comment section what is the most important thing for you when you buy a smartphone. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Pew pew.